What about the Dichro test? Oh, about God, Dichro. Bear in mind, it's a short <laughs> film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think it's an attention okay. It's all about techniques, sort of, I guess, Trevor learned from all his cookie key days, you know. But I've, I have a long running fascination with tubular bells. And it's kind of about this, really. I suppose it comes from a, a love of punk, and this being the antithesis of what we understand to be British punk. And, but I love this record sleeve, and, and, and simultaneously, I really genuinely dislike the record that's within it. <laughs> <laughs> so I have this kind of, I have this kind of, um, you know, this kind of dichotomy really about it. But also, I mean, this is, to me, this is just, just so symbolic of so many things because I think, in many ways, it's the antithesis of what you might understand to be uh, the punk. Trevor, as a name, I first became, you know, the work. As I said, the work I knew, it's like anybody who's interested in music would have seen his work. But as a name, connecting a name to the work, it was when I was actually at College in Hall in 1989, 1990, I think, and there was an exhibition of DNA D winners on a, on a staircase in this building where we were. And it was technique that uh, Trevor had done with Peter Savile. And I just remember thinking it was incredible. I mean, I'd, I'd seen it, but I'd never really thought about it. I turned up at a studio to, we were building buses for London Transport, little mini buses. And um, Trevor was the photographer, and I was like, you know, stunned, really. That, you know, the guy whose imagery I'd looked at through most of my, you know, late teens. Because then we, you know, because we were talking about trying to find oh, the original wow. and that's the actual slide from the beach. It's beautiful, isn't it? Brilliant. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Yeah. Well, another thing I was about going to say, I do know that, because the idea, I think he took from Magritte, didn't he? The castle in the Yeah, yeah, Totally. So that, and, and the Magritte thing is a castle on a rock in the premises. So again, I mean, they're talking about surrealism, that's a very literal reference to surrealism. Oh, I'm still, I'm bowled over by that, Toby. I, I, um, and obviously I knew tubes or bells, and then I, I kind of made connections then, and then, I, then I'm looking at sleeves, I realised like flogging a dead horse, which I'd always really loved, that was by Trevor, rock and roll swindle, all these things. I mean, and then even recently, things I didn't know were by Trevor, like things like um, the Pete and Dud LP, which is the, which one with, with the bag of vomit. You know, all this stuff comes up that he, he, just, he was just involved in so many things. He's quite a unique character, and I think if you find his work, it's really nice. And if you start tying it up, I think it's more prevalent probably with the music work. Are these are the original props that Trevor used on some product. Which, I mean, even the straws are still in the can, though. They just sort of appear out of the box, wouldn't they? Yeah. So that's amazing, isn't it? This stuff. Oh God, it just keeps going great, isn't it? This has even still got popcorn in it. Yeah, yeah, oh, oh yeah, rock, it's a bit wrong, this is, their, this is their explanation of, of the Sun Product sleeve. So the sleeve for Sun Product was designed by Jamie Reed and Trevor Key. The record itself was described by its producer as being 40 minutes of absolute rubbish. And the problem facing them was how to design a cover which would actively discourage sales and demythologise the Sex Pistols, who by that time didn't even exist as a band. He was quite left-field when it came to um, sorting stuff out. It was very much sort of... You know, it was a process. You know, it was a process of just doing what pleases you, really. And there was kind of like there wasn't like you know, a, there wasn't like a strict. Well, you know, we put the light there and we put the light there, and this goes here and this goes there, and there's our picture. It was like you know, every picture was always different. You got it. I got it. There you go. All right. Okay. So that was yeah. That was a. Uh, so the, yeah. So we just use never mind the bollocks and great rock and roll and just. Flogging a dead horse. Flogging yeah. a dead horse. I wonder why this was never used. That's brilliant, but it's with the additional marijuana swastika gonna... <laughs> Yeah, which they were talking about in that. Um... Yeah, I didn't read that bit in there. Did you? They wanted to put it on everything, I think. Was it the... Yeah, because it, it was he used it for the dead Kennedys. Right. And it was subsequently decided by Jamie Reed and Trevor Key to use it on as many music. Industry, industry products as possible. Its use is to try and show the oppressive nature of the music industry. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't yeah. think marketing would let him do that today <laughs> somehow, do you? So I think Trevor's work's very, very well known, even if Trevor, as, as if Toby said already, that even if Trevor wasn't the kind of person to push himself into the foreground, the work is incredible and it's got, you know, I mean, the Sex Pistols can, millions of, millions of things that are, that they're genuinely iconic, not, not just, like people say, iconic. They actually are these iconic records. These. This is amazing. Yeah, these are great. I mean, but it, some of these. Yeah, look at that. Oh, you see that? That's that something one. like that. But some very early Polaroids. Uh, I asked um, 
when we put our proposal together for the, the show, I asked, um, very, we asked various people to, to give us some sort of uh, words in support. Mm -hmm. And then I always knew Wolfgang Tillman was a big fan of Trevor's work. And he wrote a very nice few sentences about uh, about this idea of play. Not frivolity necessarily, but the idea of, um, I think, of experimentation and play. And this idea, and you can see that within this, within this kind of love of the process with Trevor's work. But the show, the actual proposal for uh, The Shine Hole is a very small idea really and it's called Trevor Key's Top 40 and the idea was to make uh, to take 40 of Trevor's best record sleeves and put them in kind of a, a kind of Neo Woolies record rack and then this record rack would travel around various venues. These are early tests that um, Trevor and Peter Saville did with um, the, it went on to become you know the Dyco images that everybody knows for technique for the New Order work um, and these, I think, were just, you know, they're the preliminary tests for it, really. Well, you can see that. Yeah. You see where it went to. From that to that. If you have the right attitude and the right sort of work ethic, then, yeah, you know, you could photograph a, I don't know, you know, a cherub for, or a tubular bell or, you know, I don't know, a, you know, occasionally we had to do stuff for money you know? <laughs> and like you know and it's about work pro it's about the process I think it's about the process more than anything so I think his work is quite eclectic